universe of beer and music. Hey everyone, Dr. Tangent back with another adventure into the multitudinal interdimensional spaces that are filled with beer and music. If this is your first time to the channel, welcome. Thanks for joining me. If you're a returning viewer, welcome back. Take a moment, give the video a like if you like what I'm doing here. Uh, and by the end of the video, if you really like what I'm doing here, feel free to subscribe. Tonight we're doing our first subscriber request. Tonight is uh, going to be interesting. Sort of a reaction, sort of a review, uh, in that I've never tried the beer. Uh, I've had plenty of beers from this particular brewery, but I've never tried this particular beer. But the song that the viewer requested, I am familiar with and do enjoy, but we will have a little discussion about that in a moment. But first off, to the beer. There's a brewery by the name of Iron Hill that was uh, started way back in 1996 in Newark, Delaware. As many craft breweries are, a couple of home brewers decided, hey, let's, let's try to make a go of it. And they've been extremely successful. So successful that I feel that oftentimes they get overlooked by craft beer aficionados because they've become large, sprawling, and they, from the beginning, embraced a holistic exp experience for their customers in that they also serve food. They're also their restaurant brew pubs, and their food is, is really good. So... In a lot of people's minds, I think they look at any brewery that's also has a kitchen and is a restaurant and start to question how serious are they about the beer. Their success aside, and they are very successful, they started uh, in 1996 in Delaware, and they now have 22 locations in five states. Each location is a brew pub brewing their own beer. So while they do have flagship beers that you can get at any Iron Hill restaurant that you go to, each locale will have a couple beers on tap that are specific and exclusive to that location. But like I said, not only are they very successful uh, in growth, they're also very successful brewers. Over those years, in the Great American Beer Fest, they've won 16 gold medals, 11 silver medals, and 22 bronze medals. Over that same time period in the World Beer Fest, which is kind of like the global GABF, it's, it's a beer festival, the World Beer Cup is a beer festival that... Brewers from all over the world will go to and bring beer to and compete against each other. In that competition, over those years, they've won 11 gold medals, 10 silver medals, 10 bronze medals, and were declared the world champ of craft breweries three times. So for those people who look at Iron Hill and go, ah, oh, they're not serious brewers, you're wrong. But the beer tonight is is different. This is uh, a beer called It's a Delco, bitch. That name for a lot of you is going to require some explaining. <clears throat> Delco refers to Delaware County, Pennsylvania. It's a blue-class suburb of uh, Philadelphia, down in the southeastern corner of the state. And it is, for better or worse, gotten a very strong reputation. The people in Delco will 
berate Delco, but they will defend Delco. It's like one of those things where if you live in Delco, you can criticize Delco, but if you're an outsider, you better not say anything bad about Delco. They definitely personify the general Philadelphia attitude of the world hates us and we don't care. So <clears throat> that's a little bit about Delco. This particular beer it is a New England hazy IPA. Comes in at 5.2%, but what's really interesting about it is it only uh, is rated at four IBUs or international bittering units. Uh, which is a rough way to quantify how bitter a beer is. Typically, IPAs have very large IBU counts. But recently, there's been a shift, a move by brewers to experiment with different ways of adding hops during the brewing process to coax all the aromas and flavors out of the hops while limiting the impact of the actual bitterness delivered to the beer. So a IBU rating of four is incredibly low. You know, very malt-forward beers will have IBUs in... 10, 15, 20. IPAs will be 30, 40, 60, 80. You haven't even seen 100 IBUs. So for a New England IPA to only have four IBUs is significant. So what does Iron Hill say about this beer? They say this beer was brewed with copious amounts of wheat and barley to give it a soft, pillowy mouthfeel. After one sip, the tropical citrus and pineapple notes will take you to your happy place, right where you are. If you know, you know. They're obviously talking about Delco. You can only get this particular Iron Hill beer at the Iron Hill locations in and around Delaware County. That's who they're, they're catering towards. So let's crack this open and take a look. a little for later so what do we have here we have something that's opaque hazy golden orange color substantial head of large bubbles pretty coarse bubbles I think you can see that there how coarse the bubbles are in the head but looks like it has some decent persistence and I'm also getting some lacing so that's Good signs. Good signs. Mmm. Very orangey and tropical fruit. Uh, smell pineapple, mango. Maybe a little grapefruit. Juice bomb. Definite juice bomb. Uh, tastes a lot of orange and pineapple, mango, even a little bit of peach, a little bit of grapefruit. Getting more bitterness on the back end than I anticipated at 4 IBU, but that might be the perception that I, of grapefruit that I'm getting, because in my mind... I really tie grapefruit to being bitter. But you do get pillowy mouthfeel. On the tip of the tongue, it's all orange juice. It just tastes like orange juice. Uh, it's really good. 
moderate body, soft. Carbonated, but not a lot of carbonic bite. By carbonic bite, I mean the tendency of highly carbonated beverage to almost like sting or tickle your tongue. So you don't get a whole lot of that. It's very soft. Tasty though. Oh, by the way, I don't know if I mentioned earlier, it's 5.2% ABV. <sighs> yeah, I mean that's that's a that's a solid juicy tropical IPA. So what song did the subscriber request to go along with this Keine Lust by Rammstein? And at the time I'm taping this, there is, are some allegations made regarding the behavior of Till Lindemann and the people around the lead singer, Till Lindemann, with respect to young female concert goers and sexual inappropriateness. At this point, there are allegations. There's an open investigation. I don't make light of any of that. I don't ignore any of that. But I'm not going to hate the art because of where the artist is right now. I'm going to leave an open mind, see what comes of the investigation, and act appropriately at that point. But at this point, there's serious allegations made, but we're still in the process of finding out what happened. I just want to make sure everyone knows I'm not just blowing that off. But this was a request. So those of you who know Rammstein are prepared. Those of you who... If this is your first experience with Rammstein, um, buckle up. It'll be interesting. All right, folks. Now, for those first-time Rammstein listeners, it's all in German, so we'll talk a little bit about the lyrics afterwards. There's also a live version with English subtitles if you want to explore it on your own. That is cool. But be prepared.
So folks, what did you think? Did you like that? I know it's a little difficult if you're not a German speaker, and we'll get into the lyrics a little bit. But the song, to me, is really about struggling with self-loathing and what that does to one's motivation, how it takes all enjoyment and motivation out of life. The guitarist, uh, Richard Crusp, talked about it uh, during the making of video for this video, that it's kind of about how when you are overloaded and, and as he put it, saturated with stimulus, getting the things that you want and you're just completely satiated on all of that and, and, and overloaded on it, how it can take away all desire. That's a good video. Let's get into the lyrics a little bit to kind of uh, delve into the meaning. The uh, kind of lust that he repeats over and over again at the beginning. German is, like English, a little tricky in that words can have several related meanings, but those meanings can be taken much different ways depending upon the context. And uh, kind of lust means... I don't feel like it, or I have no desire to do that, or I don't want to. So when he's saying kind of loose, kind of loose over and over again at the beginning, he's basically saying, I, I don't feel like it. I don't want to. When he starts expanding into the first verse, it's, I don't feel like not hating myself. I don't feel like touching myself. I, I would feel like masturbating, but don't feel like trying it. I would feel like getting undressed. Don't feel like seeing myself naked. So there's a reference to body image there. Uh, and, you know, probably another tie into the fat suits for the video. But the, the, the song really explores how deleterious self-loathing and ennui can be to one's motivation and satisfaction in life. On a serious note, if this song speaks to any of you uh, very personally, if you're feeling a lot of these things, uh, a lot of these themes that are uh, played out in the, in, the, in the song, you can get some help. You can get people, find people to talk to. And sometimes that's all it takes is just talking to somebody. Uh, there'll be some links in the description. But... Let's get back to it. The beer. Dan, who requested this, beer is beer's good. Beer's solid. It's a juicy IPA. Not terribly bitter. Uh, more bitter than I expected on a four IBU beer. But very, very juicy. Very fruity. Just a little bitterness on the back end. The song is the song. I mean, Bromstein, I been to a Rammstein concert and it's pretty crazy. Uh, there's a reason that Till Lindemann is uh, a certified pyrotechnician primarily because they, they, they use fire and pyrotechnics so extensively and so voluminously uh, in their acts that they were getting a lot of early on getting a lot of hassle from insurance companies and promoters regarding safety. So he went through that, that certification process uh, to help appease some of that pressure. Uh, but their shows are super high energy. I mean, they're German industrial metal, so it is pretty niche. Uh, some people hate it. Some people love it. If this was your first experience, or you think it might have been your first experience to Rammstein, you may have heard... The song Du Hast. D U H A S T. I'll put a, another link down below. The description gives me 5,000 characters, so I'll do what I want with them. But uh, that was the song that really kind of put them on the global map. Uh, they are Germany's 
most successful German language artists. So take that uh, for what you will and take that David Hasselhoff. Uh, he's not really German, but they love him over there for some reason. It's weird. But anyway, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe. Hit that notification bell when you do, because I'm putting out new content at least once a week, sometimes more. So if you want to keep up with that, if you dig what I'm doing here, hit the notification bell after you subscribe. That way you will always be up to speed on what's coming out. And, and leave me a comment. Did you like the video? Did you hate the video? Are you upset that I did Rammstein? Are you upset that I did a low IBU New England IPA? Do you have a question? Let me know. I'd love to interact. And uh, feel free to share. Throw it out there. Anyway. Happy beer. Happy music. Happy life. Have a great night, everybody.